<laughs> hey, what's going on? How's it going? Hey. 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 Morning, Adam. Morning. Happy Friday. Yeah, it's uh last day. Then the mm. weekend. Ready for the weekend? Yes. Yeah, I need I need some days, which will mm. be good. <laughs> Any big plans? No. Um, I mean last weekend was Easter, so I really didn't get to take a break. We had a, you know uh, some people come over and cooked and so that was Sunday, and then uh, Saturday, you know, you got to get the house ready. So you got to clean, clean, clean. And, yeah, so it was more of like work, work, work weekend versus relaxing. So this weekend will be good to kind of lay back and do nothing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I imagine it's much more of a thing. Like we have Easter here, but it's not really like a thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wait till yeah. you're here. <laughs> it's it uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of Christians here uh, in Korea. Actually, there's my my wife and my wife's mom are, are Christians. So, oh yeah, uh, nice. Went to church, did that. I'm not, but we went. I went, <laughs> went with them. And yeah, it was also my wife's birth. My wife's mother's birthday. So okay. it was more of like a birthday day than Easter day. It was yeah. Like a uh, but how's it going, everyone? We've got some exciting news, actually. To yes. talk about today. Uh, aside from the kit that we're going to be giving away, of course. You have that, Adam? Can we share with everyone. The Santa there. Custom, yeah. The Bandai one. It's a pretty thick box, actually. It it's is. Like, it is. Yeah. Hmm. Put it near my head here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one knows the design. size of my head, but yeah. <laughs> it's a nice design. Yeah, um, I haven't built it, but I'm, I'm sure it's like the other P Bandai ones. You know, they're pretty nice in there. Pictures look nice of it, anyways. Yeah, now that you mention it, I'm not sure. I think I built the Sandrock EW when it first came out. So that would have been eight or eight or so years ago, something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, eight or nine years ago. Uh, yeah, and it's based off the same kit, so and it's like all the Master Grid Wing EW kits are all kind of very similar. So yeah, they're nice, solid kits. Uh, I like the cloak on that one. I like the yeah. solid pieces compared to like actual cloth, and it looks good. Yeah, mm -hmm. depending on what you like. The uh, they perfected it more with the RG crossbone though. The RG crossbone I think is the best one. Yeah, I, I built that one and, and definitely like that one a lot. The, the way that they did the cloth on it, it's mm -hmm. funny because like it's. Have you ever built any of the LBX kits, the old ones? Mm -hmm. So they'll have capes, and on the pictures they look like it's like a um, like a cloth cape, but mm -hmm. it's actually a piece of paper you cut out of the instructions. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Bandai's come a long way with what they yeah. do for for like capes and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, now that you mention it, yeah, I think I have heard about that before I, I, because uh, I think some people, people in Discord were talking about the LBX kids uh, a little while back, and they were talking about the capes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those are <laughs> not good. I mean, you could crumple it up a, a bunch, you know, like how like paper gets really soft, you like crumple it up and then yeah. spread it back out and crumple it up, you know, back and forth, and the, it does get kind of like, it could kind of make it work, but... Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we, so uh, the other exciting news that we have to talk about uh, before we get to answering a bunch of you guys' questions for today is Kotobuki related. Adam, you want yes. to talk about that? Yeah, um, Zoids are now coming to the U.S. fully licensed, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then, uh, yeah, we've been working with Kotobukiya and are now officially set up to work directly with Kotobukiya Japan, um, you know, and import products directly from them. Uh, there's a lot of like places here in the states that distribute out for them, but uh, we'll be working directly with them now too, which is cool. Um, but yeah, definitely excited for Zoid kits. Um, mm -hmm. A lot more Kotobukiya kits, kits uh, mm -hmm. we'll have in stock and, and more quantities of them, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I think what probably most people will be excited about is um, official mm -hmm. uh, Zoid HMM kits getting a. Uh, being allowed to be brought here to the states mm -hmm. and not be at scalper prices, so um, Man. yeah, <laughs> yeah, because those kits are already, I mean, pretty expensive. Yeah. No. Uh, so yeah, having to pay <clears throat> so much more for them, it's it's tough. But I will just say, have you built any of them before? The HM kits? 
No, I have one Liger, and it's one of the Kotobukiya, like, online ones. It's, like, a clear blue. I don't remember okay. which Liger it is. Um, no, I built, like, the Metal Gear ones from mm -hmm. Kotobukiya, which I was told there's pretty much the same amount of parts, but I've never built one. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess that would be similar. Uh, but, man, they are really fun kits to build. I, I liked Zoids back in the day, um, mm -hmm. like, when I was on Tsunami, but it's not something I'm, like, super into. Uh, so I'm not like collecting all the HMM kits, uh, yeah. but I've got a handful of them, and yeah, they're really fun to build. It's very complex. I would compare them probably more to like a perfect grade, even than a master grade, almost, wow. just by the complexity of them. Uh, and they're quite large as well, too. Not like quite as big as a, a perfect grade, but they're definitely pretty big and just have a ton of parts, yeah, and tons of detail uh, in them. So yeah, they're. They're really fun kits to build. So if you guys are into Zoids at all, even if you're not like a super fan, I would definitely recommend just trying one of them at least. Yeah. Uh, just choose whichever one you think looks the most cool to you. Uh, once we start getting them in stock. Yeah, I know a lot. We've had some comments on people like, "Oh, you only get one in." They have now put the U.S. and other countries got approved for it too. Mm -hmm. Um in their production schedule. So as they mm -hmm. are reprinting or creating new Zoid kits, we will now mm -hmm. be getting those. So they're not just gonna make a whole bunch and just send them just to the US. It'll be yeah. now just in the production schedule. So, um, right. you know, so you'll see more and more, I'm sure every month or every other week or so getting put up, um, you know, as part of their schedule of, of production for them. Well, hopefully they rerun a bunch of them sometime in yeah. the near future. So you can get some more of them. I know, like they they have been making through making their way through the line, kind of doing the like repackage version or like the marking plus versions that they've been coming out with, kind of uh, over the past year or so, like every couple months, yeah. the new one. Uh, so hopefully they'll stick with that. And they got the uh, so the shield liger is the one that's coming out uh, yeah. next, like forthcoming. Or, so that'll be cool. And all all the ligers are based off of the same liger frame. So definitely check that out. Uh, it's very cool. So that's great news. Speaking yeah. of Metal Gear, hopefully then you can get kits like that stuff yeah. and easier as well, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, because we've always been limited on how many we're allowed to order through, but now it'll it'll pretty much be wide open as many as we want to get, and so we'll be able to bring in a lot more, which is cool. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, very good news. Um, anything else uh, new stuff in or coming in? Um, Days there's a that. lot of stuff coming next week. Uh, there's there's mm -hmm. a few containers getting shipped to us uh, right mm -hmm. now. They're like halfway through the U.S., so they'll be to us next week. So tons mm -hmm. of restock stuff. Anything that you see April back order will be in stock. Um, mm -hmm. And if you've done it, April back order will get that shipped out. Um, we did get something in. We got the first set of the judge kits in. So if you were part of the first wave, um, you either – have a tracking email or you'll get one pretty shortly. Mm -hmm. um, we actually got some of the second wave came in too, but most of those will be in uh, later this month or early next month, the second wave, if you were part of that pre-order. So yeah, got some judges in, got some of the big death stingers in. Um, nice. You know, so those got shipped out. Um, i trying to think what other kits, some third party stuff came in, some like Ava weapon units and mm -hmm. Did we have the cross hanger last time we were on? Uh, I think you did mention about that last time, yes. And uh, I'll just say, in the meantime, since the last episode, I got mine in. <laughs> so <laughs> you guys watching are are uh, wanting to see a review of that cross hanger. If you haven't ordered one yet, you want to see a review. I'll be reviewing that pretty soon, probably this next week. Awesome. Uh, be doing that, and also the kind of version of the transport base. As well, too, that one. I don't know if you had that last episode when you showed. I think you showed the weapon set and the cross set. Yeah, we have the base now. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that they are. there's a base with an LED set that's coming, too. But that's mm -hmm. not here yet. But the base, they're just a normal base without the LED set for is, is here. Here, uh, Godzilla Prime had a good question slash suggestion there in the chat. Oh, hang on, not that one, sorry. <laughs> uh, why does the site not include a just in section for a just arrived section? That is a that's a good question. Um, so it's a lot of work because then you have to <laughs> basically tag every product you got in. Um, mm. We do have a new section, so anything new that came in, you click that mm. and you can see it. Um, 
but I mean, that's not a bad idea. We can, we can probably get that done. Um, I think we didn't do it before. And then like, for example, next week we're going to get probably f- three to 450 different items in. So going through each one of those and, and putting a tag on that item to go into that category would take yeah. you know a few hours to do. And then, you know, what time frame do you take those off? And, mm-hmm. you know, so then that'll take time taking that tag off. So, yeah. yeah. And if the point is like to show like, highlights of what's just in you can't like put all that in that's just like uh yeah um i mean what we do is we we do send out when we get big orders like that we'll send an email with what came in so it'll be a whole list of everything that arrived Mm -hmm. um we haven't done that lately because it's not we probably haven't done that in like a year honestly Mm -hmm. i think the last time we did it might have actually been two weeks ago we got a pretty decent size shipment but the last year it has just been like maybe one pallet or so mm. whereas what we're getting in now is like 30 40 pallets and then mm. you know, we'll get back to doing that and that's when we used to send out those big restock emails and yep. and stuff so keep an eye for that in your email um you know we also have now you can sign up to get test me- text message alerts for when we mm. get restocks in and stuff so if you haven't done that and you want to be a part of that marketing thing um you can sign up for that as well yeah. right to the phone yeah uh, a couple of things too that I just wanted us to talk about here before we get to the questions. Uh, Sam had a question there in the chat about the news about Macross. So Adam and I were talking about that a little bit before we started, that both of us had kind of seen the news, but not in detail. So if one of you guys in the chat uh, wants to clear that up for us, what's going on with the Macross stuff, uh, let us know. Sam, I think he should know. So Yeah, <laughs> he seems that. like he's excited about it, which yes. it seems like yeah, it's yeah. exciting news. So hopefully uh, it is. Macross fan. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing was about the gun girl gun kits. We were also talking about that uh, before yeah. the show, but uh, maybe you can talk about that, right, Adam? Yeah. Um, I I don't see why I can't. Um, I asked Bluefin the other day. We were talking about like the Thirty Minute Sisters kits and those gun girl kits, and they said that they were not at this time going to be bringing in the gun girl kits. So. Um, they didn't really give me an explanation why. I don't know if it's just a Japan thing or if you know all the. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, if you want those kits, they're, they're, we right now will not. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry. Uh, and then also, I, I see uh, Tony had asked this a couple of times now, so we can answer his question here. He's talking about the uh, uh, rescue. Yes, well, that looks the Iron yeah, Man. Yeah, we are getting that. Um, I'll have that up on the site today. Uh, so yeah. just kind of keep an eye out. Obviously, after yeah. the show, I'll probably just jump down and do it. I've got I find I got all the pictures for it. Um, and we'll um we'll get that up. Uh Sleepy said in the chat there that the marketing distribution agreement reached for worldwide stuff for Macross. Uh, the press release specify the show movie stuff but uh, presumably presumably that'll mean merch too so yeah hopefully yeah that's good news all right let's jump into some of the questions here today got a, a bunch of them so we'll see yeah we get through those uh starting off on the youtube community tab here uh, from the post yesterday mr despair said is the hg gaza c restock that was slated for January coming in April shipment. Yes, um, it is on its way. Okay. So you if you pre-ordered or back-ordered it, you should get it. I don't know if they're still up for back. If they're still for back order, then there's still some to get. If not, then then okay. all the ones have been reserved. That's amongst the kits that are supposed to be coming in next week, then probably. Yeah, yeah, it should be in that one of those containers. Uh, Suit and Spade said, I'm getting emails about earning more US Economic Store points. Are those still a thing? Yeah. Yep. You just got to log into your account and any order that you placed. So every dollar will give you one point. Um, and then you can use those points to redeem uh, towards, you know, dollars off of your order. Um, I think there's a free shipping thing on there now, too. So you can, you know, redeem for free shipping. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also get points for leaving reviews of products, for following us on Facebook, Instagram. Um, so, yeah, rack those points up and save. Mm. Yes. Choose wisely how you're going to use them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. 
uh i've i'm just really loving playing genshin impact recently and it's just <laughs> just reminding me of you know having to yeah. choose how you use i know you're not playing so you won't know what i'm talking no, about <laughs> um, every, like everyone here is playing and i just have no oh, yeah? time yeah i actually find i got on we started playing monster hunter at lunch um uh, -huh. uh and we did it for like two days and now no one's doing it so Mm. Yeah, everyone's yeah, playing. You gotta, you gotta yeah. play. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it a lot. But yeah, yeah, like in the game, you have uh, basically kind of like a limited supply of energy to do certain things that you have in a day, and it like just slowly replenishes over the course of the day. Gotcha. Yeah, so you have to like choose how you're going to use that every day. Anyway, uh, Hunter said, when painting a kit, do you put it together first and then disassemble to paint, or paint and then assemble? Yeah, I'll uh, I'll assemble it, figure out what I'm gonna do, um, but I'll figure out other stuff other than just painting. Um, usually, mm -hmm. I'll kind of have a color scheme in mind before I build it. Um, but what I do is when I build it, then I'll kind of figure out where I want to add details and and panel lines and 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 other mm -hmm. stuff while it's built. <clears throat> then I'll disassemble it, and you know, I'll, you know, whatever panel lines I will have already probably drawn on with like a sharpie or not a sharpie, mm -hmm. like a pencil or, or or something like that so i'll, I'll remember where i want to do those lines or you know mm. certain things i have for you know put a thruster here you know stuff like that so that's usually what i do when i assemble it and then take it apart mm -hmm. the color scheme is kind of already in my mind because you have lots of line art out there and you can sure. play in like photoshop or you know whatever draw or you know whatever you want to do to try to figure out different color schemes which yeah you can do without even building a kit honestly Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, or, I mean, if you want to build the kit first, another way that you can do this, and like I've seen Josh does this, and I think Moki does this as well sometimes too, is uh, build the kit and then take a picture of the kit and then go into Photoshop. I think it's a bit more work because yeah. uh, then you have to um, do whatever it is in Photoshop. I don't actually know how to do it, so yeah. I couldn't do it. But, uh, and you can, you know, like uh, alter the colors. Of the kit of just within your on your photograph of the kit and Photoshop is the thing you can do as well too. So especially if you were changing the design and so like getting the line art wouldn't work for you because you have uh, right. some modifications or whatever. That's another way you could do it. Uh, but yes, just to, to answer the question, I also yes always uh, assemble first and then disassemble uh, before painting. Uh, a couple of times I've started painting or at least uh, done the priming while the kit is still assembled. Uh, so that way, it's just kind of a, a cheating way to know exactly what's going to show on the kit. That way, like if you disassemble it all first, then you have to remember which parts, especially like of the inner frame, which parts show and which parts don't show. If it's parts that don't show, you don't necessarily need to spend a lot of time painting them. But it's kind of hard to remember that sometimes on more complex kits. Like So like for the uh, Gundam 3.0 Master Grade kit, for example, I did that. I sprayed a first coat of primer just while it was completely assembled. And I took it apart and did a little bit more priming and then went into the painting. Nice. You can do that. And I think I think like the Dragon Momoko Strike Noir is the only kit that I've painted before assembling it. And that was because I was worried about that kit having uh, uh, fitting issues, not being able to take things apart after I put them together. So I was like, I'll just paint it first. Took a risk on that one. Yeah. Uh, will there be a restock or addition of airbrushes and airbrush compressors? GMR wants to know. Yeah, um, we've looked at that. I started to ca start carrying more. Uh, we carry like two or three airbrushes, mm -hmm. um, but that is something that we're looking into actually expanding uh, more as airbrushes, airbrush parts, compressing everything you need for that. So, yes, mm -hmm. it, it, is, it is on the way. When? I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, 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 that'll be good. Uh, so there's some cool stuff. Uh, does Display make uh, airbrushes yet or not? I mean, they make a lot of stuff. Not to my knowledge. Um, I don't think any airbrushes, right? Yeah. I mean, you've got uh, your normal Iwata and Badger and, and all those brands. GSI Creos. Yeah, GSI. Broken the Boys. Harder Steinbeck. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure, sure. A lot of. Solid brands out there to choose from. Yeah. Uh, Iwata as well as Sparmax, same thing, right? Yeah. Uh, all right. 
let me see, E95 said, are you working on improving the website? It feels outdated and would benefit from uh, improved user interface. Um, I mean, we're updating it consistently. Um, yeah, if anyone ever has ideas on things we can improve, please email us um, mm. or message us. I mean, we're always open to different ideas. Um, I think, you know, you go through the internet and you look at other people's stuff and you, um, you know, try to adjust and, and see what the, the trends are for, for different things. I know we just updated our main page for our mobile um, mm. website. So, yeah, we're always changing stuff here and there. Good, good. Yeah, and suggestions, you know, always welcome. So, yeah. Uh, not to me. Send it to Adam or someone yes, there. Yeah. I, can't, I can't do anything about it. Send it to uh, us here. You yeah. can either send to support at usagunstore.com. Um, feel free to email me if you have suggestions on it, adam at usagunstore.com. Um, you know, because like I said, I, that's, that's how we improve is by getting that feedback from you guys. Uh, Mitch asked, are there any plans to start carrying larger resin kits or any of the more known studios like Yuja, Land, and Model Bingo, et cetera? Um, yeah, it's not... Uh, if you look at most of the companies that sell resin in the in here in the States, they're usually way, way overpriced uh, for what you can get them for, either directly from the person making the resin kit um, or, you know, I mean, you can go to Taobao and get it cheaper too the the it just the cost part of it the back end part of it is not easy right now to mm -hmm. to do or cost effective for consumers um mm -hmm. you know do i mean i can get a kit and i can sell it for you know double the price that you should be able to get it for on like Taobao or mm -hmm. you know even like I said the company directly making it so is that right to the consumer or should you just direct the consumer to a cheaper, you know, mm -hmm. option? So. Mm -hmm. And the one thing too, like you've talked about before is that uh, if, it, if it's anything that's a full kit, then you wouldn't want to sell that right. or only selling stuff that uh, requires you to have a Bandai kit. So conversion kits or uh, like detail of parts, which I think like all the usual land, I think they don't make any full kits as far as I know. I think it's all conversion right. kits and all that. Yeah. Uh, Model Bingo, though, I think mostly makes a lot more like full kits. Yeah. Um, okay. Reiji said, what time in April are the Attack Girls going to be in? Uh, I got the Arachne, Heracross, White Tiger, and all thanks to my reviews. Well, that's good. I haven't reviewed the White Tiger yet, though. <laughs> um, they're on their way to us, so they're probably close to the port, honestly. Um, but I know... Mm. Then it takes a little while to get unloaded off the ship and then put on a truck. So um, I would assume later this month, um, but they are, I mean, they're, I haven't looked at the ship tracking yet, but I'm, I, last time I looked at it, it was, it was pretty close to the U S mm. and they just uh, announced a new one. The, the, um, well, I can't yes. think of the name, the blue one. Uh -huh. um, and uh, that one has uh, the colors for the North American version are different. Yep than yep. if you order from Asia. So I mean, if you, there's a particular color version that you like, but if you're getting it uh, through us, through the North American version, it's a different color from what people have in other parts of the world. Yeah, I think um, I, I got to check and make sure. I think the North American version, you get both the red and the blue. Oh, OK, yeah. Um, I like if I remember part. correctly, yeah, I think you get mm -hmm. both those colors. And then the first release, so if you order it now, you'll also get like the little shirt that comes with the girl yeah. um, as a bonus part. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, check it out. Brand new one. Just put it. I think it was like a PE, like a Japanese style PE uniform, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that on there briefly, the white t-shirt and like hot pants. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Haven asked now that Bandai has two factories up and going, will restocking be a huge, uh, re will restocking, uh, be a huge amount of kits or will it be manageable amounts? Um, yeah, so we're uh, kind of what we were talking about before. We haven't really had a container come in since probably March of last year. Um, yeah. And now we're getting containers in again. So Bandai's mm -hmm. revved up their production capacity. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, um, you know, let's say that their original capacity was at 100% before and they're meeting the demand. Well, then COVID mm -hmm. hit and now you know, you've got this 
230% capacity you need to meet because that's your demand. Well, mm -hmm. that new factory only added about 200. So you mm -hmm. still have um, the you know, capacity that they're not able to produce stuff mm -hmm. for, from what I was told. Um, I mean, the demand is just so high. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure they're going to, you know, build more factories and, and more stuff, yeah. or maybe even rework the layout of their, their mm -hmm. current factories to produce and put more machines in there or something. Um, yeah. But yeah, but yes, to answer the question in short, yes, we should be getting more sizable restocks. That's good. Yep. Uh, Matthew said, who would like to see an animated continuation of the wing series that included more mobile suits from the side series like this Sandrock? So like the uh, frozen teardrop suits or something like that, for example. Or I don't know if he's, he's also including stuff like the G unit side story going that far or whatever. But yeah, would you? Um, would you I to? would. I I mean I. But it might just be that nostalgic part of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's the first gun that I watched was was Wing. So yeah, I think I would. And I think I think it would probably do good here in the states, but I don't know how well it would do out of the states. I think. Uh, uh because in my opinion like uh, endless waltz is a lot better than the series so i think if they uh had it continue on as like an ova basically like in the style of endless waltz i think yeah it'd be better it'd be yeah good. not like a full series i don't need to do that but like a thunderbolt style like ova series could be cool yeah, yeah. why not um let's see uh and someone asked this in the chat and i just want to answer real quick uh, asked how I got the picture of the MG Verka Atlas Gundam. <laughs> yeah, that was an April Fool's joke. If you missed the yes. you missed the memo on that uh, news video that I put out last week, that was it's all fake. There was not, none of those announcements were real. A lot of people got it, but I was really enjoying reading all the comments in on that video because uh, I was a surprising amount of people did not realize that it was April Fools and. I felt a little bit bad, actually. I, felt, uh, <laughs> I have to make another announcement, like saying uh, that it was all fake. Uh, they'll figure it out. Yeah, I've learned to uh, any Gundam news that comes out April first is not real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And but, uh, because I know that like April, April Fool's Day is not a thing everywhere in the world too. So I mean, you have yeah. to. Oh uh, yeah, you know, I think about that. Yeah. In some countries, people just are not like as aware of that. So yeah, sorry, everyone. <laughs> I did try to make it very convincing, though. Uh, nice. so I, I guess <laughs> why a lot of people were fooled. But yeah, that uh, that photograph of the Atlas Gundam that I showed is actually the, the HG. That was a prototype image of the HG when that came out. So, yeah. Uh, Hack asked, uh, do you think we will ever get a Crossbone Phantom a kit? I hope so. I've talked about that before. Yeah, they've done different things with it. They've done... Um... Oh, what are those things called? The next edge or next? Yeah, mm -hmm. they've yeah. done something with that. Yeah, so I don't see why good. not. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just probably a matter of time when it will come out versus will it, you know, ever come out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's the uh, the Phantom and the Ghost. I think are are yeah. kind of similar kind of designs that yeah they've made different figures and stuff of, and yeah. they've made uh, so many different crossbone variant kits. It's kind of a wonder why they haven't made those because I'm sure they'd be popular. Yeah, I'm sure they will eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Uh, Hyper said, when do you think you will restock the Grimgird of full mechanics or uh, the 100 scale Grimgird or any of the 100 scale? He said full mechanic Gundam's kits, but I'm guessing he's just talking about any of the 100 scale IBO kits, basically. Yeah, so end of April, early May, all the 1100 kits should be back in stock. Cool. Yeah, those uh, I know. They haven't really made those for a while, right? Any of them? Um, some like they had. We got the Lupus Rex in, in one right. of the small shipments. I think right. last month. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, they. I mean, they were slated to be made last year, and then everything mm -hmm. just got pushed back. Um, mm -hmm. so but yeah, from from what I saw, um, later this month and in early May, they're. Mm -hmm. I think they're already made. They're just getting loaded into. Yeah, containers yeah. to be put on ships now. Cool. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, hopefully we'll see some news about a new Master Grade kit someday. Yeah. yeah. You're kind of expecting cool. that, but who knows? Uh, that would have been a good one for a news video. Dang. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah <okay>. Master <laughs> I know. I knew that was Bale or something. Anyway. Uh, T-Bird asked, fingers crossed, I never need to ask this again, but is there a confirmation on the Neo Zeong? Yeah. Um, I believe from what I read, the end of May there. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're getting currently getting made in the factories now. And then um, yeah. the end of May, they'll ship out to us. From what I read on our order sheets. Good deal. Yeah. I saw something uh, the other day about there was going to be like a special <clears throat> color version coming out for some event in Fukuoka or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Did you see that? Um, yep, yeah, I did see that. And I think that's, I mean, once they have the molds in there, all they got to do is yeah, change right. plastic. So yeah. um, I think mm -hmm. that's kind of, you know, that's why Part I assume they're that. making them now because that, yeah. yeah. There's uh, like a special color version of the Unicorn Plan B, I think, right? And the uh, um, Neo Zeon in like blue kind of color, right? Yeah. It looked kind of ugly. But anyway, <laughs> at least they're making the kits again. Yep. Uh, all right. And John said, uh, what occurred to allow Zoids to start being allowed for sale? Do you think that this is just the start? Uh, what else would you predict will be coming? Well, we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but anything else to expand on that? Yeah, um, I, honestly, what, what did it, I mean, what drives all business decisions is money. So I'm sure, mm -hmm. you know, as much as I could say, <laughs> um, yeah. uh, I'm sure the licensors um, probably realized that they could make more money allowing different things and, and then, you know, allowing the license to go through and mm -hmm. then working out a deal on this certain price aspects and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, that's probably what allowed it. Um, yeah, I think the increased demand for model kits and hobby products in general here in the States um, mm -hmm. helped drive that too. Um, I mean, that's yeah. just kind of, yeah, the, the hobby world was a, a dying industry for, for probably the last, geez, 20 years. It, it probably was kept going down and down and down. Um, you know, hobby stores, brick and mortar ones were closing left and right. Mm -hmm. Now it's, kind of turned the other way, you know, with, mm -hmm. with, you know, Bandai and Gumpla has kind of rejuvenated a lot. And so now mm -hmm. it's bringing on a lot of other companies and a lot of other model kits with it to, mm -hmm. you know, back to the, the forefront of, Hey, this is kind of cool. Um, you know, I, I do like building these things. I'll spend my time doing this versus, you know, playing a video game or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a lot of friends that built a Gumpla kit and then went on to build, you know, car models and, and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's a kind of good gateway drug. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> plastic crack. I mean, yeah, Bandai is kind of bringing everyone else up along too. I mean, once yeah. uh, it's easy to find Gundam stuff and I don't know, like whatever else you're into, if you're into Con Rider or some of these like really big properties that Bandai makes and there's a ton of kits of them out there and probably easy to find. And then you might find, oh, hey, this other company also makes Metal Gear kits. That's crazy. I love Metal Gear and things like that, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's good. All right, let me take a couple more here from YouTube, then we'll switch over to Instagram next. Let's see. Uh, Josh has two questions. First, Zach, how is the Anchorette paint that USA Gun Store added compared to Mr. Color? I don't have it yet, so I can't tell you. But uh, <laughs> we were talking about it, Adam and I, and yeah. uh, I was saying it. It looked quite similar to E7 paints, which I've also not tried, so I can't say. But I would say they're probably similar to like Gaia paints. They look similar to that, all right? Yeah, um, and I know we've had a few questions in the chat. We are getting an E7 mm -hmm. shipment. Honestly, mm -hmm. it should be here any day. Um, mm -hmm. It shipped out a while ago. Um, mm -hmm. But the I haven't tried the anchor paints myself, but having mm -hmm. the colors here and opening up a look at them, they look, um, they definitely look thicker, but like the colors look good. Whatever pigments they use, I think are, are really high quality pigments. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, he just said you use a lot yeah. of thinner. Yeah, you, you do. And I know Chris, um, he's tried them out. Um, yeah, I think I saw some some images of him posting up that that he's been uh, you know testing nice. out and painting a kit with them. Jeez, that's a lot of thinner. Yeah. Um, so, um, but 
yeah, I mean, when I try them, hopefully by our next video, I can maybe answer more questions on that. Um, I know some of them already out of stock. We have a bunch more coming. I just placed another you know, larger order for them. Um, but they, they look like, you know, quality paint for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Um, it's it's a, one of those situations where it's um, like, you know, it's like modelers on the grounds designing it, right? Yeah. Kind of thing. So I'm sure they're, you know, getting some good stuff. Uh, his other question was, Adam, are the Zaku 2 2.0 going to be restocked? And any reason why the website paint option, Mr. Clear Color GX series takes you to the Mr. Color GX series and not the Clear Color GX series? So it's a question about the um, website, something not lined up. Yeah, it's just something I got to fix. See? But the Zaku 2.0s? Um, I yeah, I mean, there's some. Um, I think the Charzaku one is coming in um, mm -hmm. in one of the containers, and then the J version. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that is getting restocked, which I think that's a more popular one. But as far mm -hmm. as like the like the Ace Pilot ones, um, mm -hmm. I have. They're not going to be here for sure. April. Um, they might come mm -hmm. later May. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right, then it's a little bit of a longer one. Uh, so I'll read this, and this will be the last one we'll take uh, from YouTube here for today. Uh, he said, I'm getting into customizing my builds, but I'm partially colorblind. It's not a problem when I stick to something that is standardized, like matching Gundam markers to the instructions when fixing color inaccuracies in the kit. I was wondering if there was a color guide or some standardization tool that I could use for picking out and mixing colors that could eliminate some of the subjectivity involved, even if it's uh, limited to a single brand of paint. And he says he's asking for his wife's sanity. sanity. So maybe uh, he's asking his um, wife for his farm or something. I have no, I guess, I mean, mm -hmm. there's different kinds of color blindness, right? So yeah. I don't really I know how to answer that question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. uh, and plus two, I'm not colorblind, so I have, yeah, I have no clue. Um, but if there is anyone out there that knows, um, please feel free to let us know so we can. Uh, I, I want to say that I think it, I, I I've seen some people post there, and if any of you guys know in the chat, I'm be yeah. shout it out. But I think I've seen like there some blogs sometimes will put like the the equivalent paints. So if like the, for example, the uh, the manual says to use Mr. Color uh, German Gray, for example, it'll tell you like what that is, what's the, like, the closest thing in Gaia paint, for example, among the different yeah. brands. I'm not sure if that's exactly kind of what he's talking about, basically to like know the okay. closest color of that. Um, but it, Gaia, really, yeah. it really depends on like how accurate you really want it to be uh, or not. Um, so, I mean, if you really want it super accurate, I mean, and uh, in their uh, manuals, they always use uh, Mr. Color paints. So if you can get your hands on those, that's kind of the best way to make it the most accurate. Yeah. Gumpla, Gumpla Miami asked yeah. a very highly political charged question about pineapple pizza. Oh. And, um, you know, we, we try to keep politics off of this. You're going to get in trouble. We will not be talking about pineapple pizza here today. <laughs> right. Because we don't want to get too hungry. Oh, that's true, too. Yeah. I don't want to get hungry. Just thinking about that. <laughs> uh, all right. Switching over to YouTube now. Uh, Hikaru asked, which Gumpla is the most enjoyable while assembling? And how do you like it? Yeah, one that was super fun to assemble. Um, uh, there's been a bunch that, that I enjoy. Um, I, I more tend to like, if I'm building a design that I like, I think regardless of the build quality, I still have fun because I still mm. enjoy the design, if that makes any sense. Mm. So, uh, I mean, I think I've said it a million times, Sanaju Stein, mm -hmm. um, I definitely enjoyed yeah. that build. And that's, sure. a, I mean, a, the Master Grade kit is, is a pretty solid kit too. Um, mm. and then... I really enjoyed, I have a Mark V, oh, what was it? It's not G system, um, core works resin kit. Mm. I actually enjoyed that kit a lot cause it was a lot of work. 
Um, and it was like my second or third resin kit that I built. Um, so I enjoyed that just because of the, the work ethic that I had to put into it. Um, so, um, I also like my perfect grade red frame, um, just because yeah. that took me a while to, to mm -hmm. get done. That was my first perfect grade that I built. So I enjoyed that build too. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's a tough one. It's, I, <sighs> hmm. <laughs> You've built so say, many. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say it's probably easier because I, anytime building any Bandai Gundam kit, I, I mean, I always enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Even though I've built so many, I always enjoy building them. It's probably an easier question to answer which was a memorable kit that I didn't really like because yeah. there's probably much fewer of those. But even that is, I mean, like off the top of my head, I was pretty disappointed with like the HG Scramble Gundam, for example. That was one that I really didn't like. Uh, I was just kind of disappointed with. It's not one that I necessarily had high hopes for, but I was just kind of. Uh, even though I was kind of not really that into the design, I was still looking forward to just a, a nice kit, you know, even when it's a di design that I'm not that into, I always enjoy building the kits, but that one was kind of just, nah. uh, but most enjoyable, I mean, just in general, I would say probably HGs are the most fun for me to put together just because they're nice and simple, not a ton of parts, you know, pretty easy. They go together pretty quick. You can basically put one together just in an evening, uh, so they're pretty chill. They're like the most relaxing kits to build, I think. Yeah. Uh, Tragic Magic Tattoo said, uh, which is your favorite mobile suit from Gundam Wing? Heavy Arms is, well, mm, mm -hmm. I like the Tall Geese too a lot. Yeah, yeah it's very cool. Yeah, I do mm -hmm. like that one. I, I would go with that. It's probably my favorite, um, yeah. which if anyone's been voting on the sticker, oh, uh, yeah. Toggies too. Vote. Put in your yeah. vote. <laughs> yes. If you guys haven't seen that, go vote for the next sticker. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I always feel like the Toggies too kind of gets overshadowed by the one and the three. Yeah. But I, I do agree. It is very cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, my favorite mobile suit from Gonna Wing, though. <sighs> Shoot. Well, I do have a soft spot for these boys, which I just got in here. <laughs> Big shout out to Patrick for sending me these. I've missed these on the uh, P Bandai Korea store here, so I wasn't able to get them. So he sent these all the way from America. So thanks to Patrick. But yeah, I love the Mercurius and the V8, uh, for example. Uh, but yeah, that's a tough one. The Tall Geese is really cool. Just look at any of the Tall Geese are, are cool yeah. in their design. So a lot of great designs in the series, yeah. Uh, what's okay? Uh, Brian asked, "Tactical or tactical?" Tactical. <laughs> tactical. Uh, tentacle. Tentacle. There you go. <laughs> uh, Mike asked, "Question for both of you: What is the most challenging part of your jobs?" Ooh. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of the back end stuff that no one sees, like the accounting, the mm -hmm. making sure your trash gets picked up and you know, you're not skips. Yeah. Yeah. I, that that's probably the most challenging because that's not, you know, like the model kits are getting in new stuff. That's probably the most exciting part. Uh, meeting customers, you know, when they come in the store, you know, going to mm -hmm. conventions when we can have them again, uh, stuff like yeah. that. Um, is fun, but like the stuff that is kind of behind the doors when you get employees that are upset about mm -hmm. something or, yeah. um, you know, think those, those things are probably the most difficult, you know, to, uh, to do deal with, or, or if you have to have a talk with somebody because they're not doing their job properly. Mm -hmm. Um, those are, those are the difficult things, uh, for me. Yeah. 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 Being the boss. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Can't be everyone's friend. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, it's not enough hours in the day. Yeah. <laughs> it's too many things I would like to do that just you know, can only fit in so many things. That's certainly the most challenging part, I'd say, for me. I'm sure you can relate. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone. Yeah. It's not. Uh, it's not very specific to 
my job. Uh, you know, everyone feels like that, I'm sure. Uh, uh, KCO asked, is there an animal Gundam? And uh, to clarify, then a couple, there was a couple of responses to this as well, too. Uh, like, yeah. transform a Gundam into an animal or vice versa, for example. Um, uh, what is the um, the one from Seed? Is that Baku, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there you, go. you got that. And there's another one. It's called something else in Seed that's basically the same thing, like a, a dog. Um, uh, the, there's a Kerberos, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. The yeah. One, yeah. And there's a... A few different variations yeah. of that. Also, yeah. Um, what else? Uh, Gaia Gundam, Mike said yeah. in the chat. And there's also that series that I think is like, I don't think it's official canon at all, but there's that series of uh, Gundam designs that do like transform into different animals. Have you seen that? I've seen, It's like I, uh, I always thought they were like fan art on like Facebook yeah. and, and um, mm. Twitter and stuff. Um, well, they'll do things like that, but I don't know. I don't know a series. I forget the name. I'm sure someone in the chat will know. Uh, they're super cool designs. I think they're like soft cannon. They're not like it, nothing that's ever been like put out by Bandai, but um, but I think the the designer is the same designer that did like all the double O designs, I believe. Right? Yeah. Someone help me out in the chat because I can't remember. It. It's something beasts, something like that. Chat says the try on three, which does separate into animals. So that is true. Um, beast, uh, nostalgic fiction, Gundam Beast. That's what it is. Nostalgic fiction. Nostalgic fiction. So just Google nostalgic fiction Gundam Beast. There's a bunch of stuff there. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Uh, I want to say that there, and Chris will, and Chris is in the chat, he'll know this. I want to say that there was some Resident Garage kit put out of like kind of the main Gundam from that series, which kind of transforms into this very like Liger looking thing. Uh, I want to say that there's a resin, resin Garage kit out of that, possibly. But Chris, let us know on that. Uh, all right. Next question here. Uh, do you ever get builder's fatigue? I recently uh, not been able to sit down and focus on the hobby primarily due to time constraints from family work requirements, uh, but I've also lost that spark that got me into the hobby in the first place, says uh, Fitz. Yeah, um, I don't. I think my problem is actually sitting down to build, which kind of sounds what similarly, you know, mm -hmm. his problem is, is having time to sit down. Um, mm -hmm. But when I do get a chance to sit down, you know, it's um, it's enjoyable for me. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know if I've ever been sat down when I had time to build a kit and was like, oh, I really don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but I know what he's saying, just finding time to do it. Um, you know, sometimes maybe you might sit down and be like, oh, I need to do this other thing before I can actually mm -hmm. do this. I don't know if that would be not, you know, wanting to do it more of you have to get your responsibilities done, but. I have not. I don't know about you. You you build way more than I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't really happen to me because I get asked this question pretty often. Um, you know about uh, getting fatigue or getting burnout, whatever. Um, don't doesn't really happen to me. But uh, one thing that is what I've talked about before is that I think good for me is that I just can bounce around between different things. So like I can work on building a kit or painting a kit or just work on just recording reviews, editing reviews, things like that. So if I don't, if I, one day I don't necessarily feel like I want to build something that day, I can just work on a review or, you know, just do something different. But I've never really had gone through like an extended period of time of like a few days or a week or weeks or anything like that, for example, where I just didn't want to build anything. Never had that. So I can't, uh, really give a good explanation but i would just say not to worry too much about it if you don't feel like doing it i mean if you're doing other things or you just don't have time to do it uh stressing out about not doing a thing i don't think is probably helping at all right yeah uh, so i would say you know if you're not having the time for it see if there's a way to kind of fit in some time here and there and if not then don't stress about it too much, if possible. But, and it can be disappointing when there's something that you want that you want to do, 
uh, and you can't find the time for it. But if it's something that you don't necessarily have that spark for, or you don't necessarily have a strong desire to do, then you probably believe it will be okay. Just kind of not doing it for a while. You know? yep. It's kind of how I am like, uh, with, I guess with like skateboarding, for example, for like the past three years, <laughs> I've like hardly gone on a skateboard at all. I still love it, like in theory. I just haven't done it. Nah. Basically the same kind of thing. So I got to skateboarding fatigue, I guess skateboarding burnout, I guess. <laughs> uh all right. Strider knee I don't know how to read that. Uh if you were to custom paint any model, what's your favorite color palette to use or color combos? For example, he said, My hus husband and I are new to this. I'm so excited and have many ideas to try. He has three Barbatos kits to try mm -hmm. different combos. There you go. Nice. Um, I go for me. Oh, really, I'm really all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I probably say, so the the color palette I mostly stick with is for probably my inner frames. Um, I usually use gunmetal for my inner frames. Um, as far as like you know, gunmetal and your coppers and your golds, I think. Probably most people stick with that. Um, but I mean, I like the blues, um, different shades of blues. I like kind of mm -hmm. how that goes along with white, which most Gundams have white in them. Um, mm -hmm. So if I'm changing up a color, I might, you know, two different hues of blue, mm -hmm. green. Um, you know, I, I like doing the, you know, like your, your Zakus and stuff like that because you're not really having to. I mean, you don't ever have to stick to a color, but you know, you can you can play you know more aesthetically color wise. I think with those than mm -hmm. Gundams. I don't know. Yeah, Zaku is there's like uh, that's one thing that's great about uh, the Zeon side, especially. Yeah. There's so many actual color uh, like color and uh, actual design variants out there that actually exist in can. You can kind of do whatever, and like it's it's not too too much of a stretch to make a design that's, you know, out of canon, but close enough. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Chris is sad about the purple. Yeah, I mean, purple is always good. Yeah. Uh, or just adding purple to just kind of anything. Uh, but I would say your favorite color palette, uh, color combos. Well, I've kind of gone through, I don't know, diff different stints. There was a while when I was using just like a lot of grays a lot, and then I've kind of gotten away from that. There was I was doing wanting to use a lot of uh, fluorescent paints a lot because trying trying those out. Um, so I just kind of go in, in phases of different things. And I've, more recently, I've been kind of sticking to like uh, kind of like uh, just color. What do I want to say? Uh, like color variant color schemes applied onto the kit. So like the RX seventy eight two and putting on the G3 colors onto the kit, or yeah. like or the MG wing kit that I recently built, just putting the uh, wing Gundam Verka color scheme onto the wing Gundam Zero EW Verka kit. So just doing like that kind of uh, a little bit less creative. Uh, so on the kit that I'm currently painting now, the RE Zaku, I'm switching back to want, trying out something a little bit more experimental and creative. So just kind of, I mean, there's a lot of kits out there, so you'll have yeah. plenty of kits to try out, many, many different color schemes. Just try out and see what you like, see what you don't like. I'm not always super happy about the color schemes that I get left with. Yeah. And we've talked uh, about before yeah. how, um, I forget who it is, um, mm -hmm. uses shoes. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, I so, mentioned that uh, Songdong. Yes. Combat. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that I mean, that's yep. a good way to kind of look at different color schemes too and, and kind of get an mm -hmm. idea of how those colors work together. Also nature. I mean, there's plenty of mm -hmm. you know, colors that work in nature with, with themselves. So. Yeah, look up like some uh, tropical frogs or something like that. Yeah. yeah. All sorts of different color schemes, yeah. Uh, Corey asked, were the Titans really the bad guys? Yes. Um, that's getting into the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, they were the bad guys of the series. So. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, LMC DZ said, what is your favorite wing design, either original or endless also? Oh, it's kind of a similar question like we already asked. So 
Yes, yeah, I agree. For now. Uh, this, so, Chaz said, this kit looks so amazing. And someone else also had a not question, so we'll skip those for now. Uh, Lock on Hobbies said, are there any plans to branch out beyond model kit supplies and figures? Um, yeah, we actually have um, little by little. I think there's some ship models on the site now and some car models are on the site. Um, I mean, you, you want to stick to your bread and butter, but yeah, branching out here and there are different things. Um, I think he means uh, not to different types of model kits, but I think he just means to different type of goods aside from model kits and supplies and figures. So I don't know what really that would be. Um, yeah, I don't know. That I mean, would, I mean, yeah. I mean, that would still be in one, like the same target audience, right? Yeah. I mean, we're, yeah, I don't know. Cause I'm, yeah. Like uh, clothing, soft merchandise. We were talking about that a little bit the other day. I was asking about that. Yeah. Um, I know that Bluefin is, getting a bunch of like Gundam like notebooks and stuff like that that we'll have mm -hmm. um the nano blocks that oh I don't even know if I ever talked about that or even with you um I'll be getting nano blocks in mm -hmm. um yes yeah, so those are now licensed um to come into mm -hmm. the states so you know you'll have like Pokemon nano block kits if you don't know what a nano block is it's like a uh -huh. tiny Lego yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. but they do a lot of like anime stuff and, and video game, um, mm -hmm. kits and, and stuff like that. So those will be coming in, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to be selling cars or, but I mean, shirts, I mean, we do sell shirts. So we sell, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, we, we talked about it. actually, it's funny cause we did talk about that the other day. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the minute you start getting into different like anime shirts and stuff like that, now you got to start worrying about more licensing and making sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're going to import it, in, you have to have the license for it. If you buy it from official distributor, the licensing's already on it, and you're good mm -hmm. to go. Um, anime, I thought about carrying anime like DVDs and stuff, but no, mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone even buys DVDs anymore. <laughs> right. Um, manga, um, but I mean, there's there's already pretty large. Mm -hmm places here in the state that kind of got that yeah. locked down so that'd be pretty I'd like i mean just amazon in general yeah you compete with them on stuff like that right yeah uh all right let me see here next uh well there's one more here also kind of wing related but uh, uh be shonen jump or by shonen jump said uh non uh, next wing non Gundam MS you want to see an HG. Non wing, so, yeah. non uh, wing series non Gundam. Oh, uh, wing series non Gundam. Um, I think what they've already made. They made a lot of peep anti variants of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, basically just lots of Leos. Yeah, they done a lot of Leos, and then they. What is the other um, mobile suit that was with the? Wasn't there another one that was with oh, the Death Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I forget about that. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I would love uh, uh, Virgo or Aries, one of those two. Yeah, I like the Aries. Mm -hmm. Aries would be good. Um, it's more unique. The Virgo, I think, probably would be also kind of loosely based off of the Leo. At least they could use like the joint parts or thing. I think. Yeah. Probably. probably. Yeah. yeah. That'd be I'm cool. Curious to, yeah, I'm curious to see if they continue making those, or mm -hmm. if they feel like they've made enough and move on. Because now they started making seed ones, mm -hmm. uh, grunt suits, and and different things from seed. And I haven't seen anything from from Wing in a little bit so other than like your you know, the death site that's coming out so your gundams mm -hmm. but yeah okay so now uh we'll switch over to facebook take some questions from here cliff asked for the current contest how much information uh, do you want in the final in the entry email just basics or a full breakdown um uh, I'll just say it's as much as you want, really, because the 
only I'll, when you send the email to me, only I'll read that. I won't uh, share that information with the other judges. Basically, I just, I'm just sharing the, the photos. Uh, so all the judges will see is just all the photos. So I mean, any information is basically would just be for me to know. It won't really go into the judging. But if you want to tell me about what you do with the kit, that's fine. Uh, but it's not necessary at all. Uh, sometimes it's interesting to know because sometimes people do do that, and it's it is interesting. But yeah. uh, I mean, anything that you do with the kit, we should be able to see anyway. And that's our job as judging it. We have to examine the kit very carefully anyway. So um, shouldn't really need much explanation. But if you want to just like explain kind of the the story, like background story of your kid or something, yeah, why not? Feel free. Uh, John said, given that there is a clearly high demand for the Wing EW kits, since they sell out on the P Bandai website all the time, uh, why do you think Bandai won't produce the kits in mass production like a regular uh, Zero and uh, Death Scythe EW kits. So why not make the P Bandai MG wing kits as just standard releases? Um, I don't know. Probably because they've never taken a P Bandai and turned it into a regular release. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's not uh, the... I don't know why. I can speculate why. Um, yeah, you... You'd be adding in, you know, a variety more of kits now into production schedules, which I think would be fine. But mm -hmm. then, you know, what do you say to everyone that ordered it as a limited edition kit? Yeah, right. you basically are now telling those people, hey, you know, good job, you got it. But now we're just going to make it mass release. So you've told yeah. people it's going to be limited edition, and then you basically backtracked on what you what you said, which I don't ever see them doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically, I think that's the number one reason, definitely, especially within Japan. I mean, that's kind of the whole reason for P Bandai in general is that uh, it just, especially in Japan, uh, people like exclusive stuff, limited stuff. That's why Bandai started doing that. I think now they do it more because it's such a good money maker for them uh, when they need some liquidity as a company. Yeah. It's really the way to get it. Uh, but I think definitely when it's when it started, it seemed like it was more like just for the people uh, who were uh, just wanting some like exclusive stuff. Like they were just doing like the few color variants and things like that. Uh, that like most of the modelers probably wouldn't be all that interested in because you know they can just repaint the kit if they really wanted it. It was just for yeah. people to collect basically. But uh, yeah, I think that's the number one thing. They would never do that because uh, people would be angry about that. Yeah. The thing that they bought as an exclusive item then to just be released as a just a standard release later on but i also think that like no matter how popular it is they uh, it's not like they're releasing a kit as a p bandai kit because they don't think it's going to be that popular they know right. it's going to be popular and it's going to sell out uh the point is just to make it a limited item that's just going to sell out and then people don't know if it's ever going to come around again some p band items like uh, a lot of the mg wing kits do get reprinted quite often. So yeah, it's basically like it's not a P Bandai kit at all. Yeah. Like the Tall Geese 3, for example, it might as well just be a standard release. It gets reprinted like every other month, it seems like. Time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, they know. That the, I, I'm sure there's been some P Bandai kits that have kind of flopped that people haven't really gone that much for, no doubt. Uh, I'm sure there's been some of those. but. Uh, the same thing for a regular release kits as well too. So it's, it's yeah, not so much about uh, the demand for them. All right, Roy said, haven't been able to order from y'all for a good little bit, uh, but do you know when the ETA on IBO kit restock ready to spend some money with y'all? Um, yeah, I believe those are coming in. There's some coming actually on their way now, um, but they're mostly. Like Barbados variants, um, I think the Bale, the Florios are on their way for this month. And then next month, um, the Grazes, I think all the Graze variants are getting reprinted or we'll have them in. Um, and then both uh, Gusions. So there, there's a bunch coming. Um, mm -hmm. thing that they aren't. 
I haven't seen is like the Hosh Mall. Uh-huh. I don't think it is. I didn't see that at all for this year. Or that, um, was it Long Distance? Uh, the Kutam, uh, Booster? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that I didn't see at all for this year either. Mm-hmm. But I think mm-hmm. most of the other ones I saw at least a different time frame here this year. So Nice. Yeah. Well, at least a good amount of those will be coming back. Yeah. Uh, Michael said, is there any tool in your kit that really changed the way you build your models uh, more than you thought it would? Um, he said, just, he said also hoping for news on the RG Ava 01 restock. Um, yeah. So uh, when I first was building, I had a crappy pair of nippers. So getting a good pair of nippers, um, Oh, what else really? I don't know if anything like drastically changed my building mm-hmm. experience. I think you upgrade your tools because you always get your basic set of tools um, that you need. So if you don't have your basic set of tools, I guess that will be your change. If you're trying to break the parts off by hand or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you know, throughout your, for me anyways, you know, I would just upgrade my tools. So it wasn't like it was a, huge change in the way it did. It was just a better, you know, faster or better quality way it did it, if that makes sense. Mm. I don't know about uh, that. Yeah, I would say there's certainly been tools that I've got that I found useful, but probably the like the biggest change maybe just would have been to switch into an, using an airbrush. Uh, yeah, 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 that's a, yeah. Um, that's a good one. Of, <laughs> I, I think maybe not exactly what he meant. I think like he, he was talking maybe like a, particular scriber or a drill or something like yeah, that. Yeah. But yeah, airbrush would be a, a very big change. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. Mm. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, because that now opens up a whole sure. new variety of things you can do. Yep. Uh Ethan said oh and did you did you mention about the uh RG Ava restock? Uh on their way. So we actually okay. get some we were supposed to get some today, but I guess it has a weather delay, so it'll be here Monday or Tuesday. Um we'll have a bunch and then there's a whole bunch more coming. Um oh crap, uh, by the middle of the month, end of the month. Um we're getting the regular one and the one the DX set is coming back in stock too. Cool, cool. Uh uh Chris also mentioned in the chat the chopper. Chopper, yes the chopper everybody loves that yeah uh ethan said uh so i'm thinking about painting a kit and wondering what paint do you think would be beginner friendly uh, without airbrushing because i don't have a setup for that yet um yeah i think uh, i never really hand painted um except mm-hmm. for like small details um mm-hmm. So please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe acrylics are mm. easy to hand paint. Is that's generally what people would use for hand yeah. painting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because I know like Vallejo and, and stuff like that, their paints are more designed for hand painting. Mm. Um, you know, when you start getting into like miniatures and stuff like that. I mean, they have their air color line, but I think a lot of their paints are are more for that. Citadel from um, Games Workshop, but those and those are all acrylic based. Yeah. Uh, yes, if you want to go that route, uh, there's that option. I would also recommend just uh, trying uh, some spray cans. Yeah, but I w- would not recommend doing that for a long time. As we've talked about a number of times yeah. uh, here in, in past episodes, spray cans are a good way to just kind of get the feel for spraying the paint, you know, similar to an airbrush in that way. But uh, the cost is going to add up a lot over time if you once yeah. you start doing a number of kits. Uh, spray cans may seem much cheaper than airbrush at first, but the cost will add up really fast. Yeah. If you're using like uh, proper spray cans, not just like the stuff from the hardware store, but like uh, Tamiya or Mr. Hobby, uh, like GSI Creo uh, spray cans. Uh, you can certainly use them, yeah, to get good results. Uh, airbrush is going to be the best way to go uh, if you can, but if you don't have the setup for that and you want to just try out some painting, then I would say just go for the easy. Yeah. Uh, Andrew said, would love to know when the Barbatos LED metal frame parts uh, release. I'm so patiently, impatiently, impatiently uh, waiting for them to show up at my door. Uh, they should be here, I would assume, any day. Um, 
next week or, or the week after. Um, yeah. I think they're just in customs right now, so they should be released pretty shortly. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Ryan said, has Bandai just not been producing kits since the end of last year, or have they been all tied up in customs, customs or something? It seems like I can't find Gumpla anywhere right now. Yeah, um, so I know that January, February, they were, from what they told me, they were filling back orders of orders that they had through last year that they couldn't fill. Um, so I don't know if that meant other countries back orders. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what that fully entails. Um, I know they were using that because they had that new facility to kind of catch back up. And then they were going in, in, you know, through March on um, delivering, you know, a, a lot more goods here. I know that March's shipment from Bandai was held at the port there. Um, there's hundreds mm -hmm. and hundreds of ships waiting to get unloaded. Um, mm -hmm. you know, their, their COVID restrictions over in California have made it a lot harder to unload ships, unload ships at a you know fast pace. So there's a lot of stuff just kind of sitting in boats and 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 just not getting unloaded. Um, so I know that there was a delay on that, and there'll probably be a delay on that until um, you know, COVID restrictions are eased up, I'm assuming mm -hmm. there. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's, I mean, short answer, that's probably it. I mean, global trade and, and Bandai trying to catch back up with orders that they have outstanding with other people, I'm sure all kind of contributed to us not getting a lot of stuff. And then there was that, I know I'm just rambling on now, <laughs> um, okay. wow. uh, that container ship that uh, had a bunch of containers that went in, was it February? Hmm. And I know the report said it was just P Bandai stuff, but hmm. I would... You know, why would you just ship P Bandai and not ship regular kits too? So mm -hmm. I, I would bet you anything, probably a lot of supply, a lot of kits and stuff were on that boat. Yeah, I think in, in general too, though, just not a lot of new stuff has come out. I think that's why you, mm -hmm. uh, I think I mentioned this as well too before too, that it just kind of seems like we haven't had any new kits really come out in a while. Yeah. Uh, Cause I think it's like you said, I think they just seem to be kind of using this time to try to catch up from a lot of what they wanted to do last year. Yeah. Uh, as far as just like getting stuff produced, and then we'll see some more new stuff coming out again pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of new stuff coming out this month, actually, from this month. Yeah. Uh, aside from all the restock stuff coming in, but uh, uh, Christopher wants to know what's the timeline on that airbrushing vid, Zach. I admit that must be the uh, promised airbrushing video that I was going to work on. Actually, uh, quite soon. Uh, last week. I was working on some plans for a new series based off of, I don't have a book here, it's over there. Uh, but if you guys saw in a recent video, I got the book, uh, the Hobby Japan book about the entry grade Gundam. There's like a 10, it's like 10 step, 10 tips for modeling, something like that in the book. Uh, so I was, I'm playing some different videos based off of some stuff in that book and they'll also probably get into some airbrushing as well too. So. Sweet. Uh, expect those very soon. Basically, once my thumb is healed that I nearly yeah. cut off last weekend, yeah. uh, that's kind of been putting me uh, unable to work this week on a lot of stuff. But uh, and he also said, "Are there plans for a behind the scenes at USA Gundam store?" Yes, that's also in the works. Uh, and after a we I'm, after I moved, you guys will see some more of that stuff there once. Yeah. I'm there working with Adam there at the shop. We'll be able to do a lot more behind the scenes stuff and things like that as well too. Uh, later this year. Uh, any HGUC kits you would like to see get redone besides the Jim and the Gelgoog? I think maybe those are some of the ones we've mentioned. mentioned uh, maybe when someone asked a similar question last week. Um, he said, personally, he'd like the Hizak, the Zaku 3, and the GPO one Those are all good options. Yeah, yeah. those are Zaku 3, I definitely. Yeah. Um, Oh, what else that he didn't mention? Um, mm. The Goof Custom, but that's a pretty good kit, and that was that's not that old. Um, mm. But I like the Goof Custom, so that's maybe why I'm partial to that. Yeah, the the Goof Custom, though. Oh, I, I mean, there, there's not much that they could really improve on because it's it's yeah. quite a solid kit, pretty recent. 
Yeah. I'm not sure like what. Four could five years. No, it's more than that. Uh, like that. Um, um, other good ones. Uh, Stardust like Memory. Thing. Stardust mm -hmm. Memory kits. Those are pretty old. Those would be cool to get get re revive versions or. Uh, the uh, Dom Choppin. It's very mm. early HGCK, which is a really yeah. cool design. Uh, but the kit, you know, it looks it still kind of looks fine, but yeah, it can't really do that much very yeah. well. It's a very popular high grade kit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jason in the chat also mentioned the camera. That's another good one. That yeah. uh, the HG was not that bad, but yeah, it could definitely use some improvements. Sure. Uh, all right. Let's see, Ed. So any has anyone found out a way to enjoy applying water slide decals? I love the way they look, uh, but there's so many of them, it takes me longer to do actually building the model. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I don't uh, mind it. I like, I like doing it. I don't mind it at all. Yeah, they're... Uh, <laughs> Just me, maybe. Yeah, it depends. I mean, I don't know. I mean, like how much you enjoy, it really just depends on the person. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of a thing that Josh and I joke about a lot too, about how much time it takes to put on water slide decals, how you're so much time, especially when you're doing it without like an official set, like a Verka kit, for example, goes pretty quick. There's a ton of decals, but you have the guide. All you have to do is just follow the guide where you put it. Uh, but, uh, when you're just doing it, uh, like freestyle or without an actual guide and you're just putting them on just by yourself, it takes so much longer because there's so much time spent just staring, <coughs> yep. staring at the kit and staring at the decal sheet. And especially if you're working off a, a couple of different decal sheets, which is usually what I'll do uh, just to try to get a little bit more variety than just working off of one decal sheet. So looking back and forth between the kit and, okay, I want to put one here, I know, but which decal exactly will work best here? And it's probably like 75% uh, of the time is just not actually doing anything. And then 25% of the time is putting the decals on. Yeah. So yeah, it takes a while and it's kind of a slow process, but it is very rewarding, right? They always look good, it just takes a while. I personally find it more enjoyable though than uh, pen aligning. Pen aligning is boring for me. I don't like doing that. That takes forever. Yeah. Tedious. It's like busy work. There's not like any thought that you have to really put into it as much as like what are side decals you have to think about. So that's kind of boring. Uh, Arthur said, when are the Barbatos metal parts coming in? Uh, the judge coming in will Barbatos metal parts. We just mentioned yeah. are coming in soon. The judges, at least the first round of the judges there. Uh, for the people who aren't in that first round, when do you expect more of those in? Uh, May, I believe is what it said. Uh... Okay. Um, it's just the two, basically, yeah. ones of those that you have. Yeah, like the first round, I wasn't 100% sure how well they do, and then they did well. Mm -hmm. So then, um, yeah, May, end of April, early May. Mm -hmm. um, but then people wanted more, so we bought a crap mm -hmm. ton, and then mm -hmm. we're sold out again, and they can't get any more right now. So <laughs> Yeah. And apparently, two of the molds broke. Yeah, yeah. We, they did we, say that they could remake the molds and yeah, yeah. But they would require us then to buy a certain quantity mm -hmm. after that, which was a pretty high quantity. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's actually true. Or not. That's, <laughs> that's what they said. But it, well, as soon as I heard that, the, my first thought was, yeah, right. <laughs> Sounds like a good way to get people to buy the kits for more yeah. money. Yeah. <laughs> we can't make any more. It's just impossible. I get it. Uh, Josh said that uh, he saw that we put the new Attack Girl kit up for pre-order, but he wants to know if there's any information about when the next Divine Beast models will be released. I think that's like the uh, like the Black Tortoise and the White Tiger ones. The kind uh, of I don't uh, know the answer to that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't seen anything about that either. Yeah. That's also Attack Girl, but they have like kind yeah. of two like lines of Attack Girl kits, right? Yeah, yeah. yes, they do. Uh, Josh, 
Josh said, after ordering from y'all for the last year, I've noticed a lot of older kits still on the site that haven't been restocked in a long time. Are there any plans to downsize the listings on the website? Or do you think a restock on some of the older kits on the horizon? Well, yes, that's as we've yeah, been talking about. On the horizon. Um, yeah. So all of our out of stock stuff, you can filter by out of stock. So you can mm. literally click a button and they won't show you that they're there. Um, mm. But by default, it all goes to the back of the page. So you're not having mm. to scroll through. So once you get to out of stock, everything beyond mm. that point is going to be out of stock. Mm. Um, but yeah, you can sign up for, you know, the reason why they're there, you can, they're always going to get remade. Just depends when. Um, mm. Bandai, you know, model kits most anyways. Um, so you can sign up for email notifications. Um, yeah, and that's, you know, if we took those off, then you, you know, when we got them back in stock, you wouldn't be able to get that notification because you couldn't sign up. But um, yeah, you can always just click the button to get rid of the out of stock stuff. You don't want to look at it. Or like I said, once you, once you get the one thing that's out of stock, everything beyond that point is going to be out of stock. So. Yes. Well, yeah, and like we've been talking about, it's just trying to keep up with the demand. Yeah. All right. Uh, there's a lot more questions, of course, but I'm sorry, guys. That's I think all we have the time for today. We're running out of time here pretty soon, and we need to draw the winner yeah. for the giveaway. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. First, we're going to draw here for which platform we're going to be taking the winner from. So one this time will be Facebook. Two is Instagram. Three is youtube so let's do this first uh three youtube which is the which has the least amount of comments that's good <laughs> 110 <laughs> there uh where it was on facebook at 162 and instagram had 232. dang so all right out of 110 okay so i'm gonna count backwards this time again uh and so that's gonna be here from the youtube community tab We'll count up from the bottom. And Adam, while I'm doing that, I'll let you yeah. see. Uh, there's a couple of questions there in the chat. Kevin is asking about Star Wars kits there, for example. Uh, if you where's Kevin? Will there be a restock? Yes. Um, actually, the shipment was supposed to come today. has a, I believe, the ATST, ATAT, or at at, however you want to say it. Um, uh, will be on there. There's some of the characters, I believe. Boba Fett is on there. Um, I think the Slave one, but the Django Fett version is on that. Uh, some Stormtrooper variants will be on there. So yeah, all that should be be coming in soon. Uh, any news on release date for the uh, heavy metal sets? Just wanted to say, love the video, Zach. Um, hmm. The I Gam heavy metal. Oh, um, L game. Mm -hmm. L game. I'm not sure. Oh, is that the? Um, those are the new that series, right? The Bandai. Uh, yeah, they're kind of like a revive Weird sort looking of mix. one point five versions of the. Kids yeah, kind of. those are coming in, I believe, the end of April, early May. Um, they're already in a container and already on their way to us. Mm. Uh, so yeah, those will be here then. The wings are on their way. Uh, the GFF MC wings. Um, so we should get those any day too. I know those have been shipped out to us, which is mm. nice. Uh, one on the uh, L game kits, uh, just that that's one of the kits that I was planning to live build with you guys this past week that I was not able to do. So uh, next week, I'll be live building uh, the L game Mark One kit. Uh, if you guys are interested in watching that in the meantime, whilst waiting for those. Uh, but I have got the winner, or uh, to be revealed, it's the one just above here. So the ninety first comment is Sakuchan. Uh, any other anime you like besides Gundam series? Um, Congratulations, yeah. first off. Sak chan yep. Thank you. Congratulations, by the yes. way. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Anime I like. Yeah. I like the Fate series a lot, actually. Really? I do. Yes, I do. Yeah. I don't know why, but I do. Hmm. Um, I even have the mobile game and stuff like that. So, yeah, I do like that series. Um, Dragon Ball Z, obviously, I love. Um, I liked... I grew up pretty much with Naruto always being an anime for the most part. So, um, you know, like Naruto, it's pretty mainstream. Um, I like Gate. Gate. If you haven't seen Gate, that's where it's at. I like Gate a lot. They never made a, no, they like ended it in the middle of 
So that was a little disappointing, but I did like Gate. That's probably my second favorite anime series is Gate. Mm -hmm. uh, real quick, before I answer the question with, with my answer, Adam, uh, can you let Sakuchan know how yes. to claim the prize? <laughs> yeah, that would be good, right? <laughs> no, um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> just send us an email to support at Um mm. You are on YouTube, so we just need a screenshot with you proving that it's you so you're logged into your uh youtube mm. channel um and then uh we just need the address to ship the item to and we will get it out to you mm. and congratulations so far haven't had any trouble getting into the prizes out to anyone right um there's been one or two prizes that people haven't claimed so um i've sent them messages mm. on their mm. you know platform so that they want on so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hopefully yeah. they get back. But no, um, I mean, most stuff has gone out and been fine. If anyone's had a problem, you know, just let me know. I'll uh, I'll put a little reply on the on Facebook there as well too, just in case. Yeah. Uh, but on uh, YouTube, I mean, where we are. Yeah. Uh, other anime that I like. Uh, not that big of an anime fan, really, to be honest. I've not seen that many. Uh. But uh, original Dragon Ball, uh, Dragon Ball Z is, you know, was fine as well, too. Uh, that's fun. Uh, Dragon Ball, original Dragon Ball is my, one of my favorites, though. Evangelion, uh, definitely. Uh, I like more movies than in series. There's uh, a lot of different movies I like. Um, Ghibli movies, of course, yeah. are great. Um, the Shinkai movies. I haven't seen like your name and the newer ones that are like the really popular ones. I've not actually seen, but his older ones. Like, uh, I loved those, five centimeters per second, et cetera. All those are great. I think we were talking about that maybe in the last stream. I think Brian was, was talking about that. Or maybe that was one of my streams or something. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, those are some of my favorites, I think, that I can remember off the top of my head. Those are good. I will admit, though, that I've never seen Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> no, a favorite of uh, many people's, and yes. I've just never seen it. Sorry. Sorry. You should watch. I'm get in trouble for that. <laughs> but, yeah, like I said, just not not really, really been super into anime, really. Just like the robots. Yeah. Ghost anyway. in the Shell. I like Ghost in the Shell too. Yeah, Ghost yeah, yeah, Shell. yeah. No doubt. Like Ghost in the Shell, Akira, some yeah. of those ones as well too. Yeah, the classics. Yeah. Gotta see those. Uh, Metropolis, another really good one as well, too. I really like that one. Uh, all right. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Uh, again, just make sure you're following on the different social media here on YouTube, yep. as well as on Instagram, Facebook, so you get the alerts uh, ahead of uh, these episodes that we do every two weeks. So you can make sure you get your questions posted on there to be entered into the future giveaways and everything. Uh, and that's going to be it for today, Adam. Yeah, thank you guys for uh, getting on and watching and uh, all the questions. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you guys for all the orders, too. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. So mm. Thank you, everyone. Yes, look out for all the new stuff coming in stock and back in stock yes. over the next week and a half, two weeks. And Code Wookiee stuff, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah, that's good yeah. news. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the pre-order is up for the Shield Liger still yet, or that's yeah. not sold out yet? Nope, not sold out. We're getting... Plenty of them, so um, definitely out, get yours though, because um, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people. Um, you know, I think that's probably one of the most requested things. Every time we get on one of these videos, mm -hmm. get Zoids, get Zoids. So now we're mm -hmm. able to get Zoids at a non-scalped price, so um, you know, mm -hmm. your regular retail prices. So yeah, get on it, buy them. Like could we I know we want more. So mm -hmm. yeah, definitely check it out. All right, guys. Till next time. Have a good weekend, everyone. See ya. Bye-bye.